All right, welcome everybody. We're going to be playing the Battle of Chickamauga from the first volume of Glory, which is a Richard Berg design from GMT Games. The box there is a little bit, a uh, little bit rough. Um, the first Glory had the first and second battles of Manassas and Chickamauga. The second volume had Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville, and the third volume had uh, Antietam and Cedar Creek. I've got all three volumes, so there were additions or errata, errata changes that were included in Glory 2 and Glory 3 to refit Glory 1. So the artillery, particularly, is uh, what I'm going to be using. I took out the original artillery and put in the uh, replacements, which no longer display a strength marker. They just use their die roll modifiers for whether they're long, medium, or short. And then, of course, they get uh, modifiers for whatever range they're shooting at. So strength really doesn't apply to them when they're firing of any kind. We're going to play the 19th of September scenario, 10 turns. Uh, the Confederates have to capture and hold four of the victory locations by the end of the game. And as you can see, there's three right there, middle and back. And then there's two up here on the upper end of the map. Um, the initial deployments, um, most of them were deployed within one hex, uh, such and such hex, except for this uh, unit up here. I think this is Granger. He was allowed to start within five hexes of his deployment hex, which was back here somewhere. Uh, we're going to be using the Division AM chits. Even though Glory 3 provided uh, this game in a refit with core activation chits, which would allow you to do combined activations for your divisions. So I'm not going to be doing that. Um, probably do a turn by turn with this. These games play uh, pretty smooth, pretty easy. I was never really fond of the early year Brigade series games because I, I thought they were just too thin and not enough action. And, not really much fog of war, but uh, these newer ones today, especially these from GMT Games and then the Civil War Brigade series from Multiman, they really, really increase the fog of war and the uh, randomness of things that might happen. Uh, we'll be using the improved charts that were prov provided within Glory 2 and Glory 3 uh, to be used with Glory 1. Uh, that's the chart that came with Glory 2 that was to change all the ones in Glory 1. And then all the other rules you use from the Glory 3 manual and player aid. So, A unique thing about this game is the, the combat system. Your artillery has three different types of fire. They can fire when they're activated. They can return fire when they're shot at by enemy artillery. And they can fire defensively when they're getting ready to be charged. And interestingly enough, you can fire defensively at all units that are charging you. When you return fire at an artillery unit or if you shoot in the activation fire, it affects everything in the target hex. So if there's a stack in there, it's going to affect all of them. Um, I have to go through the special rules. I know that uh, the Confederates have to make some uh, crossing decisions right off the bat. They have to state where they're crossing, what forge they're using right from the start, and then they have to stick to that. So outside of that, I think we're going to get started, and as soon as I get the first turn done, we'll get back to you and keep you updated. All right, see you shortly. All right, Glory 1 Chickamauga completed the first game turn, 0630 turn. Uh, the only reinforcements were the remainder of Reynolds' brigade who come on. He has an independent brigade, very, very unique brigade. These guys are equipped with uh, Spencer repeaters. They get to fire twice every time they shoot, and when they are assaulted... Or correction, when they are fired at, they get to fire first and their 
there's no return fire. So if, if, if the Confederates assault them, they get to fire and their effect is immediate. The Confederates don't even get a chance to fire if they should like disrupt them or send them running. And then they get to fire again. Uh, most of the attacks with Longstreet's guys right here on the southern end of the battlefield. Um, and you can see artillery is devastating. S stopped all of those attacks. Then I tried to attack with this Union unit and he got stopped. So the the combats never happened really. Same thing here in the middle. Twice the Confederates tried to attack and those guns just stopped them cold. Both times because they get to fire at both stacks. They lose a DRM on the second one. Uh, these attacks are fixing to happen. Actually, the first one did happen, and the Confederates won and pushed this unit back, but they didn't disrupt them. So that'll probably carry on. And these two cavalry, uh, uh, one brigade split up. They fired and disrupted uh, Liddell's front brigade there and uh, stopped them from the assault. So only one successful assault out of about six tried. Alright, well that's the end of the uh, 6.30 game turn, and we're going to start the next one, and we'll update you after we're done.